aerodynamics.org. You can get there from my site, or you can go directly there. They maybe should go to your site because they might crash mine. Okay, so go to my site. Go to uh, go to any of those three. Better give them the addresses. Okay, one more time: www.mikehagen.com. Uh, www.rodenmath, R-O-D-I-N-M-A-T-H dot com and uh, Roden Aerodynamics, R-O-D-I-N Aerodynamics dot, uh, dot org. That's right, I think. Okay. Yeah, thank you. All right, no problem. If you page down about a third of the way down the page, the first thing you'll see when you page down is an image of a circle. All right, so if we take a circle and uh, we take the numbers 1 through 9, and we equally space the numbers 1 through 9 around the circle with 9 at the top of the circle. And uh, then going clockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and again finishing with 9 up on top. So the 4 and the 5 are sort of on the bottom, both sort of straddling where the 6 position would be on a clock. And we have the 9 on top. All right, so this is how we start, right, Marco? And we've got equal sections of this circle. Is that correct? Um, I'm just listening. Okay. So far, you're doing great. Okay, so... Um, it's never, it's, it's, what you've done is you've just taken, instead of 12 digits around the circle, you've just made a, a nine-digit circle. Nine's at the zenith. Essentially, 360 divided by 40 equals nine. Okay, so we so, have... Exactly. We have, we have nine 40-degree arcs, basically... Uh, that are that are cut out of the circle, and again, that's a great actually, uh, Marco. That's a great description. Imagine that you have a that you have a clock, but it only has uh, nine numbers on it instead of twelve, and the nine is actually where the twelve would be, and then the one would be exactly where you would think it would be. So you start at the top with nine, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way around. Um, now from there. We start to connect the dots. And how do we connect the dots, and why do we connect them the way we're going to connect them, Marco? Well, um, I'm still going to let you say you're doing so good. Okay, so... Um, essentially, you're giving Dublin... everybody... You're giving, but if they do it right, they have essentially the key to the universe. Okay, well, let's talk about the key. This is the key to the universe, and it's, uh, and, and, it's, and it's not... You know, I know that's a big cookie, and I'm not sure we want to take a bite out of it, but, but there, there are many people that are saying that so far... They have not been able to find an example where Marco's uh, work here does not fit. In other words, so far he has not been it has not been able to be determined that this is wrong, and that's basically the way that we test mathematical formulas in our in, in our in our world. So, all right, so we have this circle. It's split up into nine equal arcs of 40 degrees each. If you start at the one position, and again, uh, assume you're basically at one o'clock on a regular clock and you go down to the 2 position, what you're doing is you're multiplying. Is that right, Marco? Everything here is a multiple. Um, you know, is surprisingly, a... everybody makes that classic error, and it wouldn't be just you. It would be all of mankind. Um, the, the truth is, is and I'm not going to explain it, and it, no one's, it's going to throw everybody for a curveball. Okay. There is a complete difference between the multiplication series of 2 and doubling. Doubling, mm. D-O-U-B-L-I-N-G, of the number one is, com is what we're doing here. We're essentially taking uh, unity or one. Everything begins and ends with the one. Right, one so universe, one God. And I was able to discover that all the other numbers begin and return to one. Right, and doubling the number one is different than multiplying the number one by two. Correct. Um, any, I, I mean, the axiom... Uh, just to throw it out on the table, of a multiplication series is that it's either um, a, a straight line or a circle, uh -huh. whereas doubling is a diagonal, it's a spiral, it's a vortex. Okay. The binary code is, is a spiral. Okay. And that's what we're talking about here. It's a vortex. Yeah. All right. But we'll say one doubled is two. So okay. from one to two, then two doubled is four. Easy. We're, on the, we're just how all computers work, how, how the biology works, four cells, eight cells, exactly. or nuclear neutrinos. One neutrino liberates two, liberates four in a chain reaction. Okay, now what we're doing is we're tracing inside of this circle, all right? And like we're light would bounce in an orb. That's how I configured it, con conceived it when I first discovered it. All right, that's a great, that's a great metaphor, actually, how, how light would bounce around on the inside of a, of a sphere or an orb. All right, so we go from one... One doubled is two, two doubled is four. So we skip over the three and we draw a line from the two to the four position. Four doubled is eight. 
So now we, now we draw a line all the way up to the upper left-hand corner where the 8 is. Now here's where it gets a little bit interesting. 8 doubled is 16. But yeah, now we're going to... Everybody, gonna, everybody, that's where you're, you're going to flunk, right? No, there. no, here's where we're going to make it real easy. Uh, mm -hmm. What we're going to do is reduce everything that we have down to, the, down to its root. And the way we do that is we just add up the numbers in the number itself. So we're just going to start by telling people how we do this. We said 2 times 2 doubled is 4, 4 doubled is 8, 8 doubled is 16. All right, there's not a 16 on our sphere here. So 16, if we reduce it, becomes 1 plus 6. We're going to add the numbers of the original number together. So, now, Mike, playing devil's advocate, why would you want to have a... a, a the number reduced to a single digit as opposed to having the whole number? Well, that's a, that's a question for my guest. I think I'll have to ask my guest that. Um, Marco, did you hear that question? Yes, I did. <laughs> because what we do is because it, we're looking for number patterns. Mm, okay. And the thing is, is that the binary code has never been diagnosed as having any underpinning pattern oh, to right, it. Right, right. All right, so that so this is what we're trying to do is we're trying to find this pattern, and we're gonna and we're gonna show them really quickly that it that it that it jumps out at us. Okay. So, uh, eight doubled is sixteen. Sixteen reduced to its root is one plus six, which is seven. So we draw a line now to our seven. Russell Blake refers to that as a digital root. A digital. Sometimes root. it's called also a digital parity. Sometimes it's called cross addition. Sometimes it's called horizontal math. But how I learned.